Okay, welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And yesterday I was on a live call here going through a hack of this site here. What is this site called? Uh, LearnWithChallenges.com. In particular, it's a three-day CSS challenge. And I was going through and I was showing how they're doing some of the CSS on there. And I showed how to do this. So if you missed it, go watch the last video. Uh, but I was also working on up here putting in a um, an image. Let me roll down the screen here because he's got a couple. So what it looked like to begin with, it was smaller text and it had this image underneath. And if you pull it out, you can see it's an image. And these are two different elements. You got a text element and then you have an image element below it. So what I did is I hid the image element, I moved things around, made it bigger, just because I wanted to work on it yesterday. But because I hadn't tested it ahead of time, I was just completely doing it on the fly, I ran into a couple of problems. And so um, overnight, I spent basically five minutes and figured it out. And, and now I'm coming back in here live, plus I'm going to show you a couple other things they got going on on this page. So the first thing we did yesterday, besides moving these items around, we came in and we gave it a background image. And that's the same image, like I said, that I think is down below. But you get a whole bunch of it repeating across the screen. So the next thing we have to do is we have to say background repeat, no repeat, because we don't want it repeating. But now again, of course, it's hanging out way over here on the left-hand side, because right now this headline element is a is a block level element and so you see it's taking up the entire width of the screen and we're going to change that in a minute but now we're going to say we want the background position to be center and bottom so okay we got it down here got it closer because i just kind of want it going across the bottom part of the image or bottom part of the text not all of it so kind of like an underline but up behind it a little bit so we got that and so now we're going to say background size of 100 percent well again there's where the problem comes in is because this is a block level element 100 percent is basically the width of the screen or certainly the width of the uh the column in this case here and so it's going to take up the full space so what can we do here what we want to do is we want to shrink this down a little bit so it's only the width of the text. Maybe maybe we want it a little bit wider than the text, but basically that's what we're looking is to get it inside of that text area. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn that into an inline block. So we're turning it into an inline level element. And so you see here now it went from being full all the way across to only the box that is containing it, or the box that it is in this case, is only as much as it needs to get the letters inside of it. And then we got to put it back into the middle of the screen. And so in order to do that, we're going to use what is known as a transform translate. And the translate function, transform, you can do things like you can scale items, you can um, yes, basically make them bigger or smaller, you can skew them, you can rotate them. Well, translate means basically move it on the screen and you're moving it on the screen in this case here um, relative to where it where the center of the screen is so let's just say here we got transform and let me just um, i'll click the down button here and we'll move back across and so now here we are at 18 percent. and of course if we go the other way it will be obviously more than 50%. So it's very simple. If you want to float it into the middle of the screen, you just do translate of 50%. Now, if you want to position something in the, like the center of the screen, you use the same thing, a transform translate, but there you use, it's slightly different because of how you have to get it there in the first place. But because this is just in its own line it's completely still in the flow of the dom it's right in there all we need to do is just move it back and forth and again we just use the percentage to move it back and forth on the screen and of course we want it at 50 percent now the other thing we wanted to look at is how can we change the size of this thing so we got in here we got background size right now we have a hundred percent let me see if i can go above a hundred percent and make it wider I can, but look what's going on there. We have, um, it's pushing out, but it's it's cutting off right here at the edge. It's cutting off right there. So now I haven't, <laughs> I haven't tried this ahead of time. I should have, so let's try this. 
let's say here we want padding on this. Uh, we want zero padding at the top, but we want 10 pixels on either side on the padding. Okay, so see what that did there? Moved it over and it gave us a little bit more color. So now let's increase that. Let's say we want to go to 20%. And now we can come up here where we had our background size of 112. And let's bring that down so that we can see the entirety of the image and the color. So let's just do that right there. Eh, right there. No, right there. Okay. One or the other. It doesn't matter. So I guess we're right at background size now of 99%. And we're saying, well, why did it go to 99% or here we are at 100%? Well, it's because we put this padding on there. So we made the size of the element, and you see it's highlighted in green on either side up here. Uh, we made the element itself bigger. So now we're saying, okay, we want to fit inside of that bigger element. And so therefore, we didn't have to change the background size at all. Now, another thing we can do, though, is we can change the height of it. So we have it just set here at 100%. But if we come in here and we say now 50% next to it, now we shrunk up the height of it. So let's come in here and we'll increase that. And you can see it's going up. And now we're up to 100 plus percent. So let's go back down to our 50%. And we'll just bring that down to 50% on the height. So now we pushed it down. But now let's say we want to push it down even a little bit further because we don't want it up that high. So we want to come down a little bit further. So up here we had background position of center bottom. So center left and right and at the bottom. But what we're going to do instead here, we're going to take out the bottom and we're going to put in a hundred percent. We're going to start with that. So now that should be at the bottom hundred percent. But if we increase that number, you see it's pushing it down further until we get to the point where we want it. And let's say we want it about right there, hundred and six percent. So that's how you can take an underlying image like that. And yeah, obviously I had to talk through the whole thing and it took me a little bit more time. But if I had to go out and hire somebody to go on to Photoshop and build that for me, it would take a lot longer than me writing a couple of lines of code here and figuring it out and getting it exactly how I wanted it to look. Because as you know, you hire somebody, you send it out to them, they bring it back and you look at it and go, that's not what I wanted. And you have to go back and forth three or four times and finally get it done. So that's a simple way how you can basically combine graphics and text into a nice headline on your page. But what else do we have on this page? Uh, well, let's just go back up here. Let's take a look at this one. I wasn't planning on doing this today, but I had enough fun with that, that image up top. I got a couple other videos in the funnel code training that shows exactly how to do that. And uh, so let's take a look at this here. Let's uh, come over here and we are going to click that. We'll come in and inspect the item. So here you have this image of the image wrapper and then you have the call inner and then you have the call itself, the column itself. And then this is the left column, this is the center column, and this is the right column all moving up and down. And if we come inside of this column, you can see as we go inside, we are all over that image. So we're going to come at the cowl level here and we're going to come down into the code and we're going to see right down here it says animation move up down five seconds linear and infinite. So what this means is the name that they've given this animation is move up down. Okay, kind of self-explanatory there. The total of moving up and down from the beginning to the end is going to take a total of five seconds. Linear means it's going to move very smoothly in both directions. And then infinite means it's just going to go on forever. So now what we have to do always in the code is go all the way down to the bottom of the CSS. And let me pull this up a little bit because we're not going to need the other. So we're going to go all the way down to the bottom and we're going to look for the keyframes associated with move up and down. And the keyframes are always the very last elements on the page. And like I said, this really could not get any easier uh, because what it's saying is it starts at 0%. So you run from 0% to 100%. There's, there's different ways to set the timing on this. But normally you see it 
it in like a hundred percent. So at 5%, you want to do this at 10%, you want to do that at 20%. If you go to my sea of ninja hacks and you see all those, uh, the guys flying around the box blow apart and flying around at the beginning, that's a hundred percent done with keyframes. And so you get the box spinning and then you say, okay, take those parts that are already spinning and then move them out using uh, keyframes basically on top of keyframes. Uh, so what we're saying here is we're going to start at the bottom of zero. So we start down here and then it will move up and it moves up 100 pixels and then it will move back down again. So it moves, it starts at zero at the bottom, moves up 50 pixel or five moves up 100 pixels at the 50% mark. And then it moves back down to zero pixels at the 100% mark. And it does that over five seconds. So if you count this here, it'll come down to the bottom. It'll take two and a half seconds to go up to the top, two and a half seconds to come back down again. So if we take out the 100% on the bottom here, what are we going to have? And I just realized the thing is probably, let me move this. Um, there we go, because there's probably a banner right down here that was covering up what I was talking about. So again, let's go back over here. So we got, it starts at 0% and 100% together. Normally, a lot of times you'll see it'll be 0% um, of bottom zero, 50% of bottom 100 pixels, and then another line below it that'll say 100% of bottom zero, but this is um, just a little bit of a shortcut for that. So again, it's going to start at the bottom, move up 100, 100 pixels over two and a half seconds, because remember the duration on this was five seconds, and then move back down to zero again. So if we click this off, it's now going to be stuck at the bottom of the page, won't be moving up and down. But if we turn this one off, it just kind of pops back and forth because it's still running the animation for zero and uh, well, it's no, still running the animation for 50%. So at 50%, it flips it up to the top. And then once that 50% is over, it, it shoots it back down to the bottom again, uh, where it must have been placed natively. I didn't look in the code exactly where it was placed. And then of course, if we increase this, let's see if we can increase this because it's also going to depend on the height of the column. But yeah, so we'll move up because we are moving the entire column up and down. And so it's flowing actually outside of the row itself, I would think at this point. Yeah, it is. So here's I'm highlighting the row and it is then floating. Well, it was uh, originally floating outside the row, but now it's even floating further outside of the row. So something as simple as that. Steve Larson on one of his latest pages has a little pig on there and the little pig is just kind of bopping around, dancing around a little bit like this. And they used about 20 keyframes to make, make all those motions work. And all they're saying is take the, take the pig, which is an image, and then just like rotate it this way, 1% and then skew it, you know, 2% and then come back the other way, 2%. And, and that, that's all it is. And so it just makes the pig look like it's dancing around a little bit on the screen. So that's all the kind of stuff that once you learn how the JavaScript works, um, the CSS, the HTML, uh, more specifically in this case, once you learn how all that works, you can easily come into a site like this. You can look at it and you can say, okay, what's going on on this page? How can I duplicate what this guy did? And so then because this was built in ClickFunnels, you could easily just copy this into your ClickFunnels account. If it's built in WordPress or something else, a lot of times you have to look at, okay, how were the elements structured? How was the HTML structured in, in WordPress? And then how can we translate that into ClickFunnels? And again, once you learn how the HTML inside of ClickFunnels works and you see a bunch of examples, which my training is just examples upon examples, um, then you will, you'll easily be able to say, okay, they're doing this in WordPress. They got this animation, the elements look like this. This is how we're going to translate it into ClickFunnels and have the exact same effects. So 